Okay, welcome to Community Alchemy Open Studio number five. Uh, <laughs> Willie Paul, we're in the Dog Patch neighborhood at uh, the Blue Greenway Urban Agriculture Network uh, World Headquarters, which it uh, shares with Alt Mountain Incorporated. <laughs> so, what are we working on this week? Well, we're working on building a hot tub uh, up in this uh, part of town, but mm -hmm. that's not ready yet. Mm -hmm. um, I brought a uh, vision map which Rob has subsequently uh, enlightened, uh, graffitized, mm -hmm. and um, helped me uh, expand. What I brought initially was an idea to talk about current technology and then what I was calling transitional technology because I'm really, really all about the future and I'm trying to figure out where to, where to go to get there. Um, I found a definition of where we want to go. It's a world of love compassion, justice, and respect for all beings. So that's, uh, in Rob's estimation, a new set of ethics, in contrast perhaps, or in supplement to the permaculture ethics and principles. So that can be further um, uh, highlighted, understood. Um, as Rob looked at this, we wanted to uh, take a look at individual components of my network and my, my, uh, my, uh, my outreach, my websites. And we also wanted to take a look at the uh, traction between them as a whole and to, to see where the energy was minimal and where the energy might be maximized going forward. So I'm not spending a lot of time uh, on projects uh, that aren't uh, promoting <laughs> a future. So in a sense, I wanted to uh, list the projects underlying in orange, the guild, uh, San Mateo. Uh, we're looking at resilience. We're looking at survival. Uh, the Plant Shifter magazine is a communication per, uh, device, of course, filled up with interviews, data. Uh, this is about sharing ideas. So those two uh, have a nice uh, synchronous uh, connection. They're not doing the same things. They may be something I can pull together in new ways and push forward. Uh, the sacred permaculture net, it's a tough sell. A lot of people don't want to talk about the sacred, but uh, nonetheless, it's in this matrix. The new permaculture exchange is about jobs and innovation, hopefully trying to create a new economy, new economy, new future. So that's, that's strong here. That is, is a transition strategy. Uh, the Community Alchemy is what we're doing today. This is number five open studio. We are practicing the design process. It's messy, it's eclectic, uh, there's a base map, and then there's a chance to expand, perhaps take elements off, off of the matrix and look at inputs, outputs, put them back in. Well done, Rob. Um, open Myth Source is about the power of myth. So. If you look at uh, a classic permaculture lens and sectors, um, I came up with four resources, which includes uh, money, maybe time, maybe there's redundancy there, competition, who, who else is out there trying to create a new economy, and you know maybe I should be collaborating with people instead of highlighting competition. That may be a more important sector, and then. Finally, there's this human in interaction. I'm all, often uh, weighed by being online so much and not having contact with people directly. So that's an important sector, I think. So as I go away from this uh, open studio today, I will look at individual uh, projects, come back and look at how they're interacting and try to uh, better use my time and my values. Perfect. Thank yeah. you, Willie. Thank you. <laughs> mm. How do I end this? Community Alchemy, open studio number five. This is Rob Joyce. Welcome. Hello. Rob, what are you working on tonight? Uh, working on uh, a site for the Blue Greenway Urban Agriculture Network um, that is uh, owned by the Port of San Francisco. We were actually uh, out there for the first half of our uh, design sprint 
uh, and I became well acquainted with the wind sector, which was uh, coming quite briskly from the north today. Um, the uh, I met with uh, the project manager for uh, the Blue Greenway, and uh, who works for the port, and it appears we will uh, may have access to this uh, site right here, which is adjacent to Warm Water Cove Park. Uh, this is actually San Francisco Bay, Warm Water Cove, okay. um, and uh, on uh, by Monday morning, want to submit a site-specific proposal uh, for what we'd like to do there. Um, tell so me about, tell me about, if you would, the slightly broader context of the neighborhood. What else is around there? Okay, we are uh, we're in the Dog Patch neighborhood. Uh, it is uh, southeastern uh, San Francisco. Okay. Um, very light industrial uh, in nature around here, um, and you, as you go a little further west, uh, maybe uh, another uh, five or six blocks, there are patches of uh, residential uh, neighborhood as well. Okay. Um, but it is uh, a very light industrial uh, feel. There's um, Sheedy, uh, which is a heavy industrial um, uh, equipment uh, company, is right here. Okay. Um, we've got uh, the old now Shutter Petro power plant over here. We have a DHL warehouse. Um, so that's sort of the neighborhood here. Um, Warm Water Cove Park uh, exists. It's uh, sort of being uh, stewarded by a uh, organization called uh, Green Trust, uh, and uh, the chair of Green Trust was also part of this meeting on Monday, where we discussed the possible urban agriculture uh, uses on this site. So, um, done some initial visioning uh, of it. Um, free access is a very important thing. Uh, in fact, one of the requirements uh, from the port uh, is that we don't have any fences or things like that up, which is uh, you know that's that's not part of our strategy anyway. So that's great. Okay. Um, See, this is a, a soil building site. Uh, so hot compost with some interpretive uh, educational signage explaining the science of what's happening in the process we're, uh, and strategies we're employing. Uh, potato towers, uh, and I see the multiple designs. I would love to see 12 different kinds of potato towers to uh, sort of inspire people of what can be done with uh, creating uh, carbohydrates in, a, in an urban what, setting. What's a potato tower, my friend? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tower full of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what's it made of? How does it stand up? Well, it can be made from tires, it can be made from chicken wire. Oh, okay. um, that's we, what we, I'd like to see 12 different solutions to that. How do we grow potatoes in a, uh, in a vertical way here in San Francisco? Okay. Um, Monday morning, this was shrouded in fog, so fog catchment was an idea that sort of, uh, sort of caught my imagination. Uh, rainwater catchment, um, worm bins, uh, big pile of mulch, uh, tools, mostly pitchforks, uh, tool storage for those tools, um, and bird habitat. There's, uh, you know, we're right on the water's edge here. Um, I'm going to see a demonstration kitchen garden. I'd love to see a firm, you know, that uh, can be a, show people what they can do. Um, and uh, and Jay wants to see some bamboo here, so we'll, we'll <laughs> see uh, the. Uh, it's uh, it's going to take some some winning over of our uh, of our of our uh, native plant lovers. Um, so this was a, a lot of assessment today. Um, we're looking at a, a space that's about 25 feet wide, uh, 80 feet in length. Um, there's about an eight foot fence here. Um, so we get sun uh, half the day. Uh, east is is facing this way. So uh, so we get a good solid un. Uh, blocked sunshine for uh, half of the sunshine hours, whatever time of year it is. Uh, fog. Um, there, are, you know, there is wildlife that's that's here on the water's edge that can. Uh, I, I think they're uh, that are already attracted um, to the setting here at Warm Water Cove Park. Okay. Um, I think we can uh, foster that and uh, do that even better. The uh, as far as the, there's controlled truck access, so we say a uh, truck wants to deliver 30 cubic yards of mulch, they have a way to get there, but it's locked most of the time. So where there's free human scale access, the uh, vehicle scale access is controlled, which uh, I think can be really, really beneficial. Um, and the uh, human sector is, uh, there's a lot of different um, uh, different sets of, of, uh, of human humans that, that come here. We have dog walkers, there's a, a dog, sort of hotel facility uh, a couple blocks away. So this is a, a common uh, area where they walk the dogs. There's people who come specifically eat lunch. So you get you know, DPW guys who sit at the picnic tables and eat lunch. Uh, people are just here to relax. Uh, you often see when, when I've, I've been at this site, see people in, you know, just a, a pair of people who are meeting there specifically to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, uh, you have uh, 
definitely a, a population of people doing uh, urban camping in their vehicles that are, are in this part of town. Um, another uh, uh, sort of neighbor is uh, there's a rock art garden that's been created that's um, on you know non-trivial scale. Um, so there's uh, there's already people who are here. Um, there's the artist who works in this rock garden. There are the people camping in their trucks. Um, and then there are the people that, that come through that are right now are simply being channeled through Warm Water Cove Park. I think we have the opportunity to channel them through um, this site as well. Um, and again, with this free access, whether it's um, you know somebody who's, who's living out of their car, um, doing some guerrilla rock art, uh, et cetera, we really want to look at um, how to channel and sync energy uh, and avoid uh, blocking as a, as a strategy uh, as much as we can. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, I think, what's sort of informing our, our design decisions now. Um, and at this point, there are some very clear interested parties um, that we can work with. Uh, the port um, is uh, obviously they own, the, they you know, control the land, so that they're going to be an important party. And they've put forth very little in the way of, of requirements, um, and I think they, they at this point understand what we're doing. Uh, Green Trust, who um, they have a very specific vision for what they've done at Warm Water Cove Park, mostly around um, native plants. Um, you know, we want to work work with them, and I, I think that's a, it's a, a really exciting opportunity to have um, an implementation of that kind um, right next to something that's that's a little more focused on on uh, urban agriculture elements. Mm -hmm. um, this rock artist, this guy's here all the time. We have the private property owner that we're butting next to up to the park visitors and again the people who uh, you know sort of on a, on a semi-permanent um, basis are, are, are sort of you know camping um, so we've got a lot of lot going on uh, a very I think non-complicated space to work with um, and we've got uh, uh, a lot of different uh, elements that I think can go towards a focused um, uh, goal for our first site which is uh, let's let's build some soil um, you know as we as we add more sites to the urban agriculture network um, we're going to uh, have sites with different characteristics but uh, for the first site I think it's really appropriate to uh, to just start start building soil get uh, get some things out of the some mulch and uh, and uh, food scraps out of the waste stream uh, build soil create a happy place for worms and uh, let's grow some potatoes <laughs> I'm there. I love french fries. Okay, well, um, Can we have french fries, Rob? I, I, I don't have a rocket stove uh, included <laughs> in, this, uh, in this model, so we'll, we'll see, but who knows? Okay, thanks a ton. All right, you betcha. Beautiful, thank you. Welcome to Dog Patch. Oh.